guys, I'm Gabriella. And I'm Angelina, reporting for Clubhouse News Weekend for the week ending on October 12th. The government is still shut down and all non-essential or unimportant employees are still out of work. The Democrats and Republicans are still acting like little kids fussing and fighting over Obamacare, which, as we know, is a health care plan. And now, an even bigger problem is coming up. The U.S. has to raise its debt ceiling, meaning that they need to raise the limit on how much money they're allowed to borrow so that they can pay our bills and continue to fund programs in this country that depend on the government. So, some Republicans want to just get rid of these costs by cutting some federally funded programs. Then, on the other hand, Democrats know that since we have raised the debt ceiling so many times in the past without like, any huge badge of effects, we can all keep these federally funded programs. If the debt ceiling is not raised, it could have major economic effects on other countries, since we are the strongest and most important economy in the world. And speaking of strong and important, the highest court in all of the land is back to solve some major issues. Order, order, order in the court. <laughs> the United States Supreme Court is back in session. Each year, its term begins on the first Monday in October. This court is also called the judicial branch and is the highest in all of the land. The other two powers are the legislative and the executive branch. The legislative branch is where the Congress makes the laws, and the executive branch is where the President Obama carries out this lo these laws. Now, back to Supreme Court. They preside over cases that no one else in the country can decide on. There are nine justices, three women and six men. They, they're there to make sure that there's no ties when it comes to making a decision. Can you imagine if you and your brother or sister were fighting and there were nine people there trying to figure out who was really right? That doesn't sound like it would work. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on to one inspirational person. Many times it's easy for us to complain about going to school or having to go to work. And some people don't realize how good they have it because there are kids around the world who aren't even allowed to get an education. The Taliban, who are a violent military group, banned girls in Pakistan from going to school. 16-year-old Malala Yousafzai has been speaking out against the Taliban since she was 11 years old. Here, most 11-year-olds worry about soccer practice and birthday parties, not about crazy guys with guns trying to stop them from going to school, you know? But last year, Malala was riding the bus home from class, and a Taliban gunman came aboard and shot her in the head and neck. She survived the tragic shooting, and she was soon nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Malala also published a book called I Am Malala that talks about her life. We take a lot of things for granted, and stories like this make us realize how lucky we really are. Now, switching it up to some science news. <laughs> For the first time in history, experts have found fragments of a comet. What's a comet? It's a mixture of dust and ice that shoots across the solar system. Now why is this important? Well, let's ask the dinosaurs. Because scientists think that millions of years ago, an enormous comet crashed into Earth and caused black soot to cover Earth and block the sun, which caused the ice age and wiped out the poor dinosaurs. There's millions of comets floating around outer space, and if comets or asteroids crash into Earth, they can wipe out the entire global population, aka the world. But don't worry guys, it doesn't look like any of the world destroyers are going to be a threat for the next hundred years. And by then, scientists will probably have found a way to shoot a missile and destroy them. Plus, we'll all be super old anyways. But speaking of someone who's not that old, the next time you wonder if just one person can change the world, think about this story. After his uncle died of pancreatic cancer, 15-year-old Jack Andraka decided that he wanted to find a way to detect the disease sooner, and he did. It wasn't easy. He asked 200 experts to use their labs, and only one was willing to help him out. After a lot of research, Jack discovered that a test, a test that can find out if someone has pancreatic cancer in a faster and cheaper way than ever before. This is huge, guys. Professionals get paid millions and spend years finding out stuff like this. For a 15-year-old to do it as an after-school activity is unbelievable! 
It's so cool that he was able to turn a really tragic event into something that might save lives in the future. Because of this amazing accomplishment, he won $75,000 grand prize at the 2012 Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. Congratulations to him. It was certainly well deserved. Moving on to one famous company now, Disney seems to be at the top of their game in everything. I mean, they make the best theme parks and now they have the best inventions. What's next? Researchers for Disney invented this awesome technique that lets you feel objects on a touch screen. So let's say you pull up an image of a bug on your iPad. With this new invention, you can run your fingers and your hand down the bug on the screen and you'll feel all the scaly and nasty bug skin. Awesome, right? Want to know how they do this? Well, inventors followed the rule of electricity and friction. They changed the electrical strengths so the intensity goes up or down depending on the texture of the image. So now you can visit the sea without visiting the sea and touch jellyfish and sharks and things that you could never touch before. Ooh. But changing it up to money now. Did you hear about Benjamin Franklin's new makeover? Yeah, he cut his hair, got some new glasses. I'm just kidding. Ben Franklin didn't really get a makeover. He's been dead for over 200 years. But, as we all know, his face is on the $100 bill. This new makeover will allow us to distinguish between counterfeit or fake money like this and real money. It has some really cool features too, like the blue 3D security ribbon and the bell in the inkwell. You know what they say, it's all about the Benjamins. And now for some health and nutrition news. What? We've all seen the Iron Man movies, right? Where Tony Stark flies around saving everyone in his fancy armored outfit? Well, what if this Iron Man suit was real? Military technologists have been experimenting on this idea for years. They call them exoskeletons, and they will be able to help soldiers run farther and carry more equipment. This new suit will be able to measure vital signs, apply sprays to seal up wounds, and most importantly, stop bullets. The U.S. Special Operations Command, or Special Ops, is hoping to have a prototype of the Iron Man suit ready next year. I gotta get me one of those. And speaking of super-like things, what the heck are superbugs? They sound like some kind of powerful insect or something. Well, they're actually bacteria that have become resistant to antibiotics. This is because doctors have overprescribed them and they stop working. So the regular flu becomes a superbug that can't be stopped. Let's hope I don't catch one of those. And now, one method is being developed in the Netherlands where it will deactivate the antibiotics with heat sunlight. That's pretty cool. Now, let's take a look at some entertainment news. This week in celebrity news, with constant updates every week on Justin Bieber's crazy driving habits or Miley Cyrus's outrageous performances, there's one celeb actually making a positive difference. Taylor Swift donated $4 million to the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum, which is the biggest donation ever in its 46-year history. And all that cash went to the building of the Taylor Swift Education Center in Nashville, Tennessee, which has classrooms, a theater, an exhibit hall, and a ton more attractions like a musical petting zoo. She also received the Songwriter and Artist of the Year Award for the sixth time in a row. Swift is the youngest person to win this award and has won it more times than anybody else. Come on, Miranda, Carrie, and Reba, you got some major competition. It's time to step it up, girls. And while we're on the topic of artists, the 2013 American Music Award goes to, well, we don't know yet. The awards will be hosted at the Nokia Theater in LA on November 24th. But let's take a sneak peek at which artists have the top nominations for this year. Leading the pact with six, Macklemore and Lewis are up for a new single of the year with Thrift Shop, new artist of the year, and artist of the year. And don't forget the usual musicians like Taylor Swift and Justin Timberlake who each have five nominations. But let's not stop there. Robin Thicke, Rihanna, and Florida Georgia Line aren't looking too shabby either, grabbing four nominations each. 
As for live performances, Miley Cyrus and Imagine Dragons will be taking the stage during the show. Let's hope Miley Cyrus can refrain from twerking this time after her embarrassing performance at the VMAs. But moving it over to someone who has had a passion for writing, do you like writing short stories? Well, check out Alice Munro. She's an 82-year-old short story writer from Canada. She just received the 2013 Nobel Prize in Literature on Thursday and is the 13th woman to win this. What is this, you ask? Well, it's an award given out each year to the best author around the world since 1901. Monroe has wit written 14 fictional story collections ranging from topics like relationships, living in a small town, and trouble with memory. She was pleasantly surprised when she found out the news and she said that receiving this award seemed impossible. And get this, she will also receive a large amount of money, which changes every year. In 2012, the winner got about $1.3 million. Wow, congratulations, Alice. She's not the only one with good news. Alvin! Yep, that's right. Alvin and the Chipmunks are back to cause more chaos after 20 years. Where'd they go? Did they join the Chipettes on a single ladies tour around the world? All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. All the single ladies all... Oh, well, I don't want to get too carried away now. The original creators of the show, Ross Bagdasarian and Janice Carmen, are bringing these furry little creatures back into the limelight. There will be both original and new songs in the TV series. Let's hope that Dave can keep them in line. And while we're talking about movies... How about we grab some popcorn and get comfortable, guys? Because the 57th BFI London Film Festival is underway. The London Film Festival pretty much does what every other film festival does. It showcases the best new films out, and actors and directors do red carpet appearances. This year's festival opened with the movie Captain Phillips, which is the one about pirates hijacking a ship and starring Tom Hanks. From the previews, it looks a little scary, so I'll pass on that one. The festival started on October 9th and will end on the 20th. And looking across the globe now, North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-il, is that guy that's friends with Dennis Rodman, but he's known as a cruel dictator that controls everything. North Koreans aren't allowed to watch whatever they want on TV. They can't say bad things about the government and pretty much have to do whatever their government tells them to do. Every year, North Korea puts on the mask games. It's a theatrical spectacle that's been described as Cirque du Soleil on steroids. Performances are super over the top and exciting. They range from musical and dance performances to breathtaking gymnastics and stunts. Most of the performers are kids, and a documentary was done on two teenage gymnasts getting ready for the show. They would work up to eight hours a day in the months before the performance, practicing on concrete outside in temperatures below zero degrees. You could not pay me enough to do that. It's really sad that these kids are forced to work so hard. The mass games are every year from August to October, so they're coming to an end for 2013. <laughs> And now, looking at some heroic animals. Who says dogs aren't man's best friend? There are countless times in this past year that those furry little friends have gone above and beyond for those they love. Just watch as his first canine helps rescue their young pup after falling into a pool. And how about River, the red cattle dog, who saved two young girls from a poisonous snake? Then check out these two golden retrievers who came home after being lost in the woods for two weeks. A family member had found one of them, Baxter, who helped lead them to his brother, Bailey, who was tangled in his, in his leash around some bushes in the woods. And finally, there's Tucker, the tiny one-year-old Yorkie. While his owners were watching TV, Tucker started barking like crazy, trying to tell them that the back of their house was on fire. Their smoke alarms didn't even go off. What a hero. I know I can count on my dog for anything. Capping off our show now. As we learned this week, the government is playing tug-of-war with each other arguing back and forth over this health care plan named Obamacare. It's like when you fight with your brother or sister over who gets to play with the iPad first. Come on guys, really? It's about time that these politicians grow up. 
I mean, I'm only a teen, so what do I know? Let's not forget about some inspirational people we learned about. Taylor Swift and her new education center, Malala and her fight for education, and lastly, our furry little canine saving the world. That's it for us, and be sure to check out clubhousenews.com for the latest news each week. Thank <laughs> you.